but well, your own bit of pride eventually has to kick in at some stage. And there was play, there was players there, and we're watching it live, and I'm looking at them, and I'm, I'm getting really frustrated watching it because the, I forgive mistakes, but you got to run back. There was players I'm after writing on five or six players. I think you should never play for Man United again. Just shameful, shameful that you can't run back and you can't put your body on the line, and forgive, forgive the lack of quality against Man City in the second half because Man City are excellent. They've been excellent for the last three, four, five years. Fantastic team. That's why they're the champions. But Man United, a derby match today, the subs coming on, you're hoping they'll have an impact. They're not prepared to run around. A couple of lads in midfield. Wapasaka, Fred, Maguire, Rashford came on. I could go on. Give up four goals. And City weren't even at their very best. City didn't have to be at their best. I thought City had another couple of years to go. I think they just toyed with them a bit like the game at Old Trafford. Just, yeah, the old sayings of envy boys. Um, they gave up and uh, shame on them. So I've been away for a few days. Haven't missed. Oh, haven't missed much, have I? Well, yeah, I kind of did. That 4-1 humiliation hammering against City at the Etihad. It was the latest example of a humiliating defeat for Manchester United. And as Roy Keane speaks about there, shame on a lot of those United players for what we saw there against City. What I want to do in this video is react to Roy Keane's comments. Roy Keane, probably the greatest captain Manchester United will ever have in the Premier League. And there's no, actually, there's no probably about it. He is the man who set the standards. And that game there against Man City, it ended 4-1 City. It could have easily been so much more. We know that. But it's not the first time this has happened this season. And what I want to discuss in this video is Manchester United's standards. What we've seen, what we haven't seen, and the fact that the players can quite literally just throw the towel in during a derby against City. 92% possession they had in the last 15 minutes compared to 8%. And Roy Keane is a man who, he's never afraid to say what he thinks, all right? After, when he went into a bit, a bit more detail there, he's saying that five or six players shouldn't play for Manchester United again. And I'll tell you what, Roy Keane's allowed to say that because when it comes to Roy Keane speaking after Manchester United are humiliated 4-1, this isn't the first time he's done it. Let's rewind to 2005. Let's rewind to that interview he gave with MUTV off the back of Manchester United getting pumped 4-1 when he couldn't play. And MUTV got him on as a pundit and he didn't hold back. What happened? Roy Keane fell out with Fergie after that, and that was the beginning of the end for Roy Keane. This is a, there's so much that's, been, that's said about pundits and, and whether they're, they're, pundits related to Manchester United are biting their tongue. A lot, especially Gary Neville, as I said about him a lot. Nobody can possibly say that about Roy Keane. And something that I've uh, not been criticised about, but people tend to point out a lot, is that I do speak in quite a few cliches. When it comes to, you know, tracking back, when it comes to passion and, and commitment and, and, and all of these things. But when it comes to Manchester United, you simply put, you do not see that. Not from every player. And when you see players like Anthony Langer coming through the academy this season and what he's putting in, his performances and what he's saying. When I get an opportunity to play for, for the club, I, want, I just want to repay the favour for the manager and leave nothing in the tank and give 100%, 150% even, every time I step onto that pitch. It's when you hear players speaking like that and you see what other players are doing that that just doesn't match up. And when you've got a manager that's using Anthony Alanga, a 19-year-old, as an example for who should be a role model, it goes to show how bad the problem is at Manchester United. Ralph Randick here, not talking about uh, in terms of effort and attitude, he's talking about enjoying themselves on the pitch. That's a very political way of saying the word effort. And Manchester United, as I said, the thing that frustrates fans so much after that game against City, it's not the first time we've been humiliated like that this season. There were two games under Solskjaer that really just ended it for Oli. And that 5-0 was, it was after this game against Liverpool where I said that Solskjaer has to be sacked. It was after that game against Liverpool where I said, I don't really think that we can go any further and I think it's only going to get worse. A week, was it two weeks later, we played City at home again and City beat us 2-0, so technically on, on paper, the 4-1 against City um, at, at the Etihad was worse, but 
City toyed with us in that game. Toyed with us. And they did for that last 15, 20 minutes. It's why Roy Keane went as far as to say that five or six players shouldn't play for Manchester United again. It's why he went as far as to say that shame on those players for how they've played. It just doesn't really get any worse than those three results that we saw there against City twice and against Liverpool as well. And the crazy thing about that is that there's been a change in between those two situations. And that's Ralph Radnick coming in. But what has changed in terms of the attitude on the pitch? Now, we've seen plenty... Like, you're talking about that Leeds game, for example. A, 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 a shining example of, of Manchester United in terms of the attitude that... Look, it's not a shining example. We 2-0 to 2-0. 2-0, sorry, to 2-all. And then we came back from it. But when it comes to attitude and ability, it's something I stand so firm on. We were, When we went into this season, right, we thought that we were one player. We, we all thought... Nah, not all of us, right, but... Quite a few United fans felt that Manchester United were one powerful central midfielder away from challenging for the Premier League title. And look at us now. The manager's been sacked halfway through the season. And we're standing here talking about what players need to be sold rather than what players need to be kept. There's not many examples inside this squad of players that you'd say, oh, look, even Marcus Rashford is part of this equation now. And this is a, this is a Rashford who was just... I would never question his loyalty to Manchester United, but even he's now swept up inside this whole situation. Saw stories emerging after the uh, City game that he might be considering his future. And it's just like, you know what? It's the culture. We all know it's the culture. It's always been about the culture. That's why I, f I felt that Solskjaer had helped somewhat. But he obviously came too soft from the other angle. Mourinho came too hard from the other angle. But I tell you what, it's all about enablers. When it comes to culture, when it comes to players not being committed for the shirt they are playing for. For players, look, the fact, of the, the fact of the matter is this, right? If those players, those Manchester United players gave a fuck against City, that would not have happened in the last 15 minutes. They would have gone down with a fight. They would have gone down, as Keane said, put their bodies on the line. They would have done everything possible to try and change the course of the last 25 minutes of that game against City. Instead... They withered like spinach in a hot pan. They just cowered inside their shells like hermit crabs running away from the tide. What am I coming up with these weird analogies for? I don't know. I think half of my mind's still in Vegas. Whew. Probably is. But when it comes to cultural enablers, welcome to the Glazers. Welcome to Ed Woodward. Welcome to the culture that's dominated Manchester United post-Fergie. And it's that culture which Ralph Rannick is still b is battling with that Mourinho... Enjoyed because it enabled his sort of culture. Big players on big money to win right now. And that's it. That's the Mourinho style. It kind of suited Mourinho. It's probably why we had our most successful season, a double under Mourinho. But it doesn't build long-term success. And it won't build long-term success at Manchester United. As I said, so many of us felt that we were one player away, one midfielder away. The problem, of course, you could talk about quality being the problem. There's players inside that squad that could be replaced with better players on paper, sure. But it's not about that at all. It's about, not about Mendieta, I'll tell you that, geez. It's about Roy Keane. It's about his attitude that he had on the pitch. Him right there as a captain. And United just not having that. Especially when the, when the backs are against the wall, the more likely response is going to be, to wither and, and saying that it's, it's really strange because this United team scored so many late winners under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We're all just left in a situation now where we're seeing results like this against City at the Etihad and you go, well, at least one of those hasn't happened in a while, but it has because you can rewind a few months to the game against Liverpool at Old Trafford or the game against City at Old Trafford. And you can just say, well, this is just the latest example of this Manchester United team showing their true colours. And that colour's not red. That colour's green. I don't know how a new manager comes in and changes that completely. I hope to God that Ralph Rannick is given the opportunity and the power to go upstairs and do the job that I think he can do and will do properly if given the opportunity. But this problem of Manchester United is not just about getting the new manager in. It's not about Eric Ten Hag coming with a magic Dutch wand. It's far deeper than that. And it's not now just about 
organising Glazers' protest because we've lost 4-1 to City. They've always been the problem. They always will be the problem. And until they're not the owners of our club, they will always be the root of said problem. Whether we're beating City 6-0 or whether we're losing 4-1, that conversation and narrative does not change. But that game there against City, it was just the latest example under a new manager in a different situation at a different time with the same patterns and the same problems come to the fore. And as I said, the fact that our manager, Ralph Rannick, has genuinely had to use a 19-year-old academy breakthrough player as an example of the role model, as a role model in a team that's got Ronaldo, Sancho, Bruno, Pogba, Maguire, De Gea, Shaw, established proper internationals. And we're talking about a 19-year-old as a role model. There's your problem. I, look, I just wanted to say my opinion on the whole situation because I was out in Vegas. I couldn't really do it. Uh, I could have done, but it would not have made a good video. And that's all I will say. Uh, but I want to know what your reaction, now that the dust has settled, it's been a few days. I'm going to get back to doing my live videos from tomorrow morning onwards. Looking forward to that. But I was hoping I was going to come back to a, a, a sunnier situation. But instead, the clouds are looming and they're darker than ever over Manchester United. How do, how do you change the cycle? How do you stop it? How do you truly take United forward? Because whenever we go one forward, one step, that Elanga equaliser against Atletico was a step forward. What happens next? Woof. Swept from under our feet. Let me know what your opinion and your reaction to the City game. And now that it's been a few days, your reaction to Keane's comments as well. Let me know what you think in the comments as always.